Banana Bunch. We got another episode of the Jungle Gyms podcast upon us. I'm having a good day. I hope you are too. And if you're listening to the audio only version of the show, do me a favor leave me a review on Apple Podcasts or on Spotify, whichever platform you use. Or if you want to get really involved, jump right in. <laughs> Jump right into the YouTube version of the show where you can watch and see along. We're a very visual store. I'm wearing jackets that let you know I'm potentially venomous. We're, we're here for this, right? So today, right now, you'll notice, uh, and it's not themed to the episode, but I wanted to make sure I plug this. I'm standing here in our discovery section in the Fairfield store, and we do have one in the Eastgate store too. And this month's set of discoveries is all international cookies. And there's so much delicious stuff here to try. You don't always have to just have Oreos and Chips Ahoy. There's all kinds of great stuff out there. and I highly recommend you check it out i should have some content about this coming up soon but just in case come eat some cookies with me and there's one more thing i want to shout out here i originally had thought about airing it this week but due to the opportunity i got for this week's episode i thought i would give them a quick shout out here so if you didn't know about this this is a hot new product that we just launched here in store locally made by three charming women it's called dojoy for all of you keto warriors out there we're looking at it's less than one net carb i almost said zero it's delicious. We tried it out, and you can actually see Julie bring that on the show. We tried out a bunch of different sandwiches. We're doing blind taste tests, all kinds of fun stuff. So get ready. Julie, thank you so much for bringing that on. I'm sorry it didn't air this week, but you'll understand why as well here in a second. So this week, and, and because Bourdain Day is coming up, I got a crazy opportunity, and I, I'll spare you the details. But for those of you Bourdain fans out there, you might recognize the guest I have on this week, Zamir Gauda. Zamir is probably most famously known to you as one of Bourdain's most favorite travel partners. He's from Russia. They've traveled all over the world together, and Zamir is a wonderful guy. You know what? I don't want to bury the lead on this one either. I say we just jump in and meet Zamir. We can learn all about his new vodka, talk about his upcoming documentary, and of course, talk a little bit about Anthony Bourdain. All right, take it, Zamir. I'm not sure you followed some of the shows with Anthony Bourdain when I would normally refer to him as my KGB mole, which he likes, right? <laughs> as ambassador of international gastronomy, because he said once to me, Zamir, fuck any state. I don't want to be part of this state. I don't want to be part of that state. But as long as you and me, we are of the same year, right? Born in 1956, have friendship. And I understand each other that we could come from different worlds, but we mean the same peacemaking thing to have people enjoying food and booze uh, at uh, any place in the world. That's what matters. We don't need borders. We don't need visas, you know, permissions. That's the world we were trying to create with him through his meals and through my booze affiliation, right? So mm -hmm. that's why politics is something we both hate, especially politicians everywhere in the world. <laughs> That's smart. No, I think that's the way to be, honestly. You made a great Thanks. point about just the, the key to making peace is finding that like happy medium between all of these things, right? Exactly. You know, I, I see it a lot now. This is, you know, I've always been food adjacent. I have a lot of chef friends and things of that nature and fan of the show as well. Uh, and it's been fun working in food now to really see that these things like food and drink, they're such universal uniters, right? You know, correct. It, it's wild to see those borders, proverbially in this sense, uh, disappear over a meal. You know, I mean, it's crazy totally. how important that is. And, and by the way, it's good that I remind myself I just had a nap because, you know, after jet lagging, you know, we just arrived here like <laughs> sure. three days ago. Yeah, I needed kind of a nap, and uh, Lord Chris will definitely approve it because he's my like spiritual advisor in many ways. Uh, <laughs> Tony's birthday is. <clears throat> upcoming in uh and about seven days right it's june 25th so if you don't mind since i might be already disconnected from the civilized world i'm landing supposed to land in mother russia on june 22nd so chris would be the person of course apart from your network and your technical system to uh forward it to our big 
uh, Bourdain fans community in many groups. We are members with Chris. For me, more importantly, it's uh, ABAS, Anthony Bourdain Appreciation Society, where, believe me or not, more and more members every day join this group like a platform to give tribute to Anthony. This is amazing. It's like the cult, you know? Yeah, but a good cult. This is a good cult. It is a good cult. That's what I'm saying. Thank you for editing my, my rough English. But I'm sure you know what I'm saying. So this is the big theme. So how people like Chris, Zamir, and you, Mark, and your guys, no matter what we do, four years nearly passed since he took his life, we still understand that he was, for me, like Mahatma Gandhi, the man who was meaning well for everyone, no matter where he went to, right? To try and show that we are different, mm -hmm. but we are basically all the same, regardless of our ethnic, religious, gender, affiliation, whatever. Food and booze unites people. This is the chance to spread the good message. Let's be friends. Let's open a bottle. Let's cut a new steak or french fries in a different recipe. That's what makes people connected. It's as simple as that. I agree. That's beautiful. And, and wonderful words, too, about, I mean, really for both of you, but, you know, obviously, Anthony was such a huge inspiration to so many of us. And I think leading with kindness, it's been a theme of my show lately. So I'm really glad that this is how this has all started, because Perfect. to me, that is the way forward for humankind in society. And the last but not least, just I hope it wasn't the dream in my nap for the last two hours. But don't forget about the time difference. There was an announcement that U.S. and uh, Canada and Mexico will host the World Cup in 2026, I believe, right? That's yes. correct. That's yep. Right. So believe me or not, as someone who was dreaming to be a, a, a professional soccer player in my childhood, right? Mm -hmm. This is a very big thing for me. And I'm very glad that many friends of mine in the U.S. and Canada I haven't been to Mexico, but do plan to with Lord, uh, you know, Chris, when he has time for it. Um, this will be another proof of verification. Like, we don't need the borders, you know. It's just like the people with goodwill. Of course, we do need to be protected from the best guys. And when I'm saying I don't need any walls, this is the theme of the documentary. So once we come to that point, you will probably bring it up to me, like, if you like in that context, right? So this sure. will be a manifestation of sports. For me, it's the same way as like you're a member of the club. You could be a member of the booze club, food club, sports club. That's where you come. And that's what I see in Buffalo every Sunday, no matter what season, the rain or shine, people would go to root for Buffalo Sabres, Buffalo Bills, whatever. And tailgate party for me, thanks to Tony, became that manifestation of how rank and file people, right, could come together and have amazing, peaceful thoughts. I never seen any physical clashes or skirmishes during the, you know, some gay uh, tailgate parties I attended. You know what I'm saying? So that's another sure. way for all of us human beings. That's what I'm talking about. We are part of the universe of human beings. That's for me what Bourdain pinpointed and helped people like me and Chris meet each other because i would never have been to cincinnati without the reason when this gentleman approached me at the social media he will tell his own story but now you better understand how we try to bring people all over together for me it's not only us for me it's also europe and part uh, russia is still part of europe as you know and definitely mm -hmm. asia where burden found amazing places in vietnam in India, you know, uh, in China, uh, if I remember correctly. So that's the way sports, food, booze could bring people together, if you know what I'm saying. Absolutely. Yeah, all these things we all love and we all take part in. It's, it, I'm right with you, Zamir. It makes a ton of sense to me. It's almost frustrating that it feels like the rest of humanity can't get in line with that, you know? Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Very true. Well, and and by, and by the way, oh, I ahead. don't plan to moderate your show. I was just waking up, and since Chris knows how to make some connections to something which I may kind of you know drop during our conversation, just now you understand better the themes. Chris knows how to bring up the connection of the very important people and friends I met 
on a film shoot and he will tell you probably his own perception of how young man like for me he's the age of my son he is like 33 uh mm -hmm. patrick carey from bartstown basically stepped into our shoot when we were there and said <laughs> well i'm a big fan of Burden. i cannot ignore your presence with your crew in my small town and that was the theme <laughs> that u.s booze connects to russian vodka made in the u.s these days by the way i'm not trying to bring up more of a russian vodka thing it's more about the mere peacemaking vodka made in the u.s yes that's the thing that sounds great to me well if you already as if, like... I had a, as if i had the vision that i don't want to rely that was when trump was the president that was produced the first batch 2016 as if i had some preconceptions thinking why should I rely on people like Putin and Trump? I don't want to go into politics, but this is <laughs> where the kind of relationship between them. I was skeptical, especially after Tony's show in Russia. If you've seen that CNN episode uh, for me asking what I'm thinking about <laughs> Mr. Putin and Trump, etc. So I thought I'd rather have my baby produced in the U.S. because I trust it more than the customs and in uh, uh, in uh, what you call um, import duties or something which could be raised or installed without asking me. So why should I depend on politicians? So that's the way. Yeah, they're usually just out for themselves. So thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so go my ahead, experience my in that short time. So direct us, you know, bring us into <laughs> whatever themes and topics. You know, mm -hmm. I'll try not to use obscene words, but you know, English is no, not my name too. Today. Yeah, yeah, no, be yourself. I want you to give me full Zamir. <laughs> okay, I will, and definitely Chris You're will be able to add the elements <laughs> because he was with us on many occasions during that trip to uh, Bardstown and Cincinnati. He basically adopted me, but then there was a conflict of interest between his family and his dog. They were kind of jealous about our relationship, kind of like a threesome. <laughs> You know, so I thought that <laughs> I would rather leave. I don't want my friend Chris to be under the fire of amazing kids I met, his wife, his kids, and the dog, of course. And since, you know, I'm more of a peacemaker, I said, Chris, thank you for, you know, inviting me, but I'd rather just go back to Connecticut, which is my, my base with my niece married to an American guy. Oh, cool. Well, tell, tell me a little bit about the vodka, Zemir. How did this all start? Obviously, you know, I know the peacemaking thing. Uh, is a, it's right. clearly very important to you. Oh, so, Chris has got a bottle of it here. Mark, do you really yeah. want to know? I do. I want to drink some, to be honest with you. You will, and you will probably start we'll crying at the, end, at the end of this show, all right? <laughs> and uh, guys, believe me or not, it, it's time to, to go like public this day. So I really need to give you the, the full story, right? Let's go. So, do, do we have time? How much time do we have? I've got as much time as you have for me. How's that? Chris, are you available? I'm available. Thank you. Okay, so 2011, my friend, about 11 years ago, right? Zamir invited Anthony to Ukraine for that episode on Parts Unknown. Mm -hmm. And, and my, 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 my real intention was to bring him to the country where I still thinking spiritually connected because my forefathers, the, the line of my father uh, came up from Crimea, which at that time was, uh, as you probably remember, part of the Soviet Union and, and, and part of the territory of Ukraine, correct? Mm -hmm. And uh, so that was one of the reasons. And apart from them, when we were traveling to like Crimea, uh, you know, I explained my you know, Crimean Jews background, which was a very interesting combination, because he was always asking me, Zemir, who you really are? Because, you know, in one place you speak Arabic, like in Detroit episode, in one place you definitely speak uh, Russian, but you don't look like a Russian. And when I told him, like, Anthony, I think that I am more of Italian, he laughed. <laughs> but believe <laughs> me or not, my recent DNA showed that I have 15% of Sicilian um, uh, bloodline. Chris, that's a surprise. I hope you still will remain as a friend with me, right? Oh, you're, you're good. <laughs> okay, just in case. So that's why Tony was always questioning, like, where do I really come from? Where are my roots? So my roots are all over the world. So anyway, that was one of the main reasons to bring him to Ukraine, to show Chernobyl and 
after effect of uh, some stupidity uh, of both uh, Soviet Union when people were overwhelmed with putting a nuclear plant ahead of the time just to report to the government that we're so good, we could start it earlier than planned. So there were many def some malfunctions, etc. And apart from them, as you remember, we would always drink vodka. At that time, there was no Zemir vodka. And when, uh, after one of the dinners, I think it was in Kiev, the capital, I was kind of spontaneously trying to, you know, make Tony kind of cracked up with some kind of jokes he liked. I said, Tony, it's, it's a great country. They produce a lot of, you know, bread, like what we call like bread basket for Europe. I believe the agriculture is great. And he liked the chicken key. That was the reason. Chicken key, like a cutlet made of chicken. I said, how about I try to come up with an organic chicken shit vodka made of, you know, chicken shit. <laughs> Tony laughed and said, Zamir, I'm not 100% convinced that it will fly as a, <laughs> as, a tech, as a tech light. I'm not good at marketing. Chris is a much better marketing person. I said, okay, I trust your instinct. So that first idea, all of a sudden, of having my vodka produced was right there in 2011. But seriously, several years after, when I was traveling between Buffalo, which, by the way, thanks to Anthony, became my kind of second base in life, uh, I found people, again, through one of the appearances, uh, it was 2012, farewell to no reservations, uh, hospitality friends from Buffalo invited me as a special guest for the red carpet, you know, screening of that episode, last episode, farewell to no reservations. I met people like Chris Carlson. I don't think my Chris uh, here ever met the other Chris. So I call that Chris Carlson spiritual advisor because he happened to become more of a guru for me. And not only for me, he's very well-established expert on booze all over the world. He is normally invited as a judge for different competitions on booze. I met Chris and realized how good he is at different, you know, booze concepts, recipes. And I said, hey, I'm playing with this idea. So what do you think? Could we find, you know, the kind of recipe I normally prefer, which is, I think established as a pure Russian recipe, not to hurt Poles or, or Ukrainians, my, my friends as well. They mm -hmm. prefer potato made vodka. I'm sure you understand the difference. Wheat yeah. is more like of a higher level, less proteins, more healthy, if you could use the word healthy for vodka productions. And as you probably remember the history, Russian czars were not stupid nor naive. They were drinking only wheat based made of vodka you know product mm -hmm. right so it was the public domain nothing smart and Chris said oh sure we locally in western new york have great winter crop production i couldn't believe it for me winter crop is the best quality of uh, uh wheat because it has less calories less protein if you know what i'm saying it's more healthy and it has more of a sweetness correct when yes. people tell me i like great goose <laughs> because it has no taste <laughs> Uh, excuse me, that makes me like <laughs> laugh. <laughs> because I feel that they buy it only because for them that's a matter of status. They can afford it, right? Sure. But through the whole of my life, I was never looking for a, a very expensive vodka. It's more like marketing bubble. I was always in the middle of the good vodka, whether it's made of spirit or the, the real uh, wheat. Sometimes they use the spirit made of uh, wheat just for a easier way to produce it so that was my dream and 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 uh it took us about two years on and off of course not like at a time with chris carlson to explore many farmers and once we found the exact type of wheat which would connect with the samples we did in his kitchen right <laughs> as a small batch like a, a bottle of two and we liked it so it was around 2016, and it just coincided with Anthony Bourdain's plans to open his food court under his name in New York City, in uh, Pier 57, Midtown Manhattan. Sadly, his plan didn't work out, but my plan did. So from this standpoint, with his promise as a friend, Zemir, if I have ever opened up that you know, food court with many restaurants of ethnic cuisine under one roof, I'll put your vodka, if it proves to be good, on the top shelf when it's being opened. 
So I delivered my part of the game. He didn't. I'm joking. Of course, it wasn't because, you know, he needed me to be uh, sort of on, on the top shelf. He had his own personal motivation to have the food he loved with original chefs, not just to have a, a New York City, Chinatown person doing the Chinese food. He planned to relocate that people, the chefs he knew, who would have their own herbs, their own spices from the native home, which was probably too complicated. And not only about Trump's timing when there was no visa given for this kind of, a, you know, emigree, so to say. So anyway, right. that project didn't work out. My project did. So in September uh, 2020, one sec, 2016, at the Thin Man uh, Brewery and Pub in Buffalo, thanks to Mike Schatzel, the man who owns several destin- venues like this, uh, Zamir Peacemaking Vodka was launched. Peacemaking simple. Look at me now as Mahatma Gandhi of today. My name, full name, Yazamir, is translated word for word. I am for peace. So in 1956, same way as Anthony Bourdain was born, I assume after my parents passed away, it's just the message I started to realize on an everyday basis, basically. I was 50 at that time. Well, maybe there was a mission for my parents to give me such a name. I would prefer to be Mark or Chris, right? But when you know people relate to you as a, oh, hey, peacemaker, without being aware that that's what my name is all about, I need to have a mission in life. And that's how vodka peacemaking and vodka made in America, right? 2016, I was kind of thinking already subconsciously, I'm not quite sure I trust this kind of friendship between Mr. Putin and Mr. Trump. Something smelled bad about that potential <laughs> friendship. So I thought, okay, I would rather be produced at a very small place, which Chris found for me called Hanoi, Hanoi Falls Distillery, 20 minutes away from Rochester, because the farmer uh, who lived next door, like across from them, would have that best wheat samples we tried with Chris and we liked it. So that's where the first batch was made. But to keep a long story short, with pandemic and many other issues in distribution, as you know, it's I'm not Mr. Tito, right? I'm not bringing <laughs> the bubble by saying it's handmade, you know? Right. Men would definitely appreciate like something handmade, like hand blown or something. For me, I think it's a little bit of a dream. You cannot produce millions of bottles handmade, right? right. It's not realistic. But when I'm talking in real terms, and Chris will confirm it, so I'm not paying him of being part of my, of my vodka <laughs> club. It's smooth, and it's really, you feel like it's made for you, if you know what I'm saying. It's not mass-produced. So the first, the first uh, limited batch we started with was only, uh, one sec, a thousand bottles, right. Since it became quite a popular product, in uh, west of New York, which means New York State. Then we had um, Detroit, Michigan. Then we had Austin, Houston. I'm giving you like a small pockets where the local boutique style distributors wanted to bring it because they liked it. They understood that it's not for mass kind of a product which people generically buy because it's vodka. It's something special. It gives you the perception of peace the way i understand my 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 message and my mission you don't get drunk (laughs) it's a blessing and the curse which means that you want maybe to get a little bit drunk but at the same time even if you drink a bottle but with proper food this is another part of the mere vodka cannot function without the real anthony bourdain food understanding it's the good food which you need to have in your stomach which helps you dilute the alcohol never drink on the empty stomach as you know in our shows we never were drinking like oh let's go for happy hour saving like three bucks or five bucks to get two <laughs> booths at the price of one without basically food that's what they expect you to get drunk and start <laughs> ordering something uh, you know extraordinary with the real normal consumption i'm not advocate of drinking like every meal but once i feel i really want to meet someone new like to have a lunch or dinner or just meet it a person in the bar, I would start a little bit with a shot, but I will never be doing it on the empty stomach. Food is important, especially in this culture where I come from, it's fatty food because fat helps dilute the um, uh, alcohol quicker. Because as you understand, if you eat it on the empty stomach, 
just pure chemistry, less than chemistry. It, the, the alcohol goes into your blood, which means directly without going down into your stomach with the food which is there to accumulate the liquid to help the food digest it. Mark, is it too complicated on this kind of a physical explanation that no. uses still liquidity? It's uh, and by the way, don't forget that in, in 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 the you know Russian language and that's my native language. That's where I was born, 1956. Uh, the mid, the how we call it, the the middle years of uh, Soviet Union uh, communism uh, stagnation. The word water is translated as vada from Russian language, and vodka the same root vada and vodka right like water and vodka so for me when i'm thinking about vodka it's still more of a kind of liquid kind of li liquidity i need in my mouth to digest something with if you know what i'm saying <laughs> so that's the mindset right so in other words it's wheat based vodka it's a component of water in it right so it's not meant to drink to get drunk it's just to get more of an inspiration for opening your mind to the people you've never seen before, to the cultures you've never been exploring before. That's how Anthony broke the stereotypes of street food for many people, including Zamir. Sure. If it were not him in the Uzbek episode, 2005, when I was ah. inviting him to different countries of the former Soviet Union, he would <laughs> insist we have a street food, which was like, a, like in the middle of nowhere, it was about three hour drive between Samarkand second biggest city in Uzbekistan and Tashkent, the capital. You know, the crew needed some food. And I said, sure, I have some ideas, Tony, but I'm not sure how hygienic the place is. There's no running water. There's no plumbing system. I so said, Zamir, don't worry. Let me see what it's like. And he saw that, for me, kind of barbaric facility when they was doing the naan, you know, how they do it in uh, India. Same way, like yeah. tandoor bread with the kind sure. of dirty hands, I would assume, said Zamir. This would be the best food you ever had. So we had shashlik done on the fire, the naan, that, that bread, vegetables. I'm not sure anyone was using water to wash them down. But he said, Zamir, don't think about the downside. Think about the upside. These people opened their heart to produce this food in front of you. Even if they lack some, you know, modern facility, it doesn't matter. You know, your stomach will accommodate it. And he was right. So since that trip, probably, no matter where I go, no matter how exotic the country is, I would definitely eat where the locals go. That kind of street food. I love that mentality. It's such a great way to, it's not just opening your mind. It really is opening your heart too. I love that it so is. much. And by the way, that's where I want my friend Chris to step in. So I have a little bit of, not vodka, by the way, I have tea, like to liquid fuel into myself. Chris, would <laughs> you mind sharing your exploration on the Tony's influence? Mark, if you don't mind. Please. <clears throat> Yeah, anything uh, that you want to ask me directly or? Yeah. Mark? Oh, I mean, I, I, oh gosh, on that side, that's a great question. No, I mean, what were some of the, what were some of like the highlight experiences for you? Yeah, and how you connected to me, once again, thanks to Anthony. What was your oh, motivation yeah. to reach out? Yeah. Um, Anthony has always been um, a great chef in my mind. And I've always, you know, started watching him when he started out and so forth. And um, I, I just loved his his attitude, his way of, of talking to people and getting you know together. Because I'm I'm a shy guy myself, mm -hmm. and I don't do that very well. Um, and and uh, he has helped me kind of break out of that shell and kind of with the food and the drink and so forth and getting to know people and talking. Um, and uh, seeing uh, Zamir on the episodes and so forth. His personality and Anthony's just mixed very well. And I fell in love with both. I mean, I'm, I'm you know, uh, Zamir is a great person. And um, so I, I reached out to him and uh, we've known each other, what, for what, 10, 12 years now? About 10 minimum, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. And um, so we just started, you know, talking back and forth. And um, I knew he had his vodka and so forth. And, uh, Try to get him here in Cincinnati. Uh, a friend of mine lives in Detroit. He mentioned he was up there with the vodka, and I got a bottle signed from him and some other <laughs> stuff that Richard gave me. If you remember, 
yeah that was the first I, surprise so when people yeah. not only love you like you know dating online kind of thing they were ready to invest in your product that was a good sign of you chris yes yes <laughs> and so uh, and i still have the bottle downstairs of the bar right now and with with the other stuff but anyway um so over the years we've gotten more close and so forth and it was the bardstown uh, uh thing he was talking about where he was going hey, down can, can i jump uh, into is that bardstown yes, kentucky by the way yes yes okay i just wanted to make sure yeah. i was in the right place continue <laughs> It's kind of weird for vodka and, and, and whiskey, you know, kind of mix. Right. But anyway, he was down there to film uh, for the new film, and he was down there with the crew. And uh, so I, uh, he invited me down, and I met up with them and so forth. And uh, that was the first time we actually met physically. Yeah. And um, they invited me to be on, the, on you know, on film, uh, talking yep. about company and so forth, and uh, my relationship. Uh, between the two and uh so i'm very very um i'm looking forward to that coming out because i really want to watch that and yeah I'm, I'm hoping that a lot of people you know see it and and love it um and, and so forth but uh we went down to barstown and um he was talking with about pat patrick uh, carey he's a fan of the show as well and he lives in barstown and i tweeted out you know we were here and so forth <laughs> and so he he told his wife he's like i gotta go i gotta go he's like what what are you talking his about wife was, like, his go. wife was really worried he said where do you go you've never met people you don't know where they are chris didn't mention what restaurant we were planning to have dinner but there were only three <laughs> restaurants he figured it out yeah <laughs> it was like well we're not at the jailers in so yeah <laughs> so anyway, he uh met <laughs> with um Zamir, and uh, now we are, are connected with them as well, and uh, with the family and the kids and everything. So uh, that's how another way of, you know, Anthony's spirit, uh, getting to know the, the different people and so forth. And now we've got a, a little family in Bardstown now. So that's a nice thing. Amazing. Amazing. That's beautiful. Bart sounds like a cool little town too. You know, I uh, I kind of got familiar with it through a uh, burgeoning interest in trying. I've actually always been a vodka guy, so I'm very excited about. Wow! It. But uh, I was trying to get. I live in Northern Kentucky, and I'm a transplant. I'm from the East Coast originally, and it was that thing where I was like, I guess I got to learn about bourbon. So I spent a decent wow. amount of time down there. I think it's so cool that you all were down there doing that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, that was a mind-boggling experience, honestly. Uh, that's well, another, uh, Chris. Thank you so much. Really appreciate about your yeah, warm, sure. warm explanation. But that's what now you, you will understand that how people can change your mind like all of a sudden. So I started basically my first bourbon when I was there, meaning like really tasting it because for me the sure. brownish color was not exactly associating with the booze. As I explained, water, right. vodka. It's like you know, it's transparent. It's like you know, water, liquid. You see, it's. In other words, there could be no poisoning in, in this type of water, right? But it's brownish. Who knows, right? You know, I'm kind of joking. So anyway, that's where I first tasted it. I liked it. And believe me or not, for the Christmas of um, last year, yeah, because we met, you know, Chris and we met Pat in July 2021. A fan of the show asking my address saying, I want to send you a gift. I said, okay, as long as it's not a... Uh, a, a minor booby trap, you know, please, here is my dress. <laughs> Probably I'm too naive, you know, to give it to the people I've never said. So there was a, a bottle of a 10 year Van Rinkel, do I pre pronounce correctly? Van Rinkel Bourbon. Oh, yeah. And I had no way that it could be expensive. So my wife, you know, women are more pragmatic. She Googled it and the price was about $1,200. <laughs> so <laughs> I, I confirmed the receipt and saying, I won't recall even the name of this person, unfortunately. Well, is it serious? Like, you know, I'm not used to getting expensive presents from people I've never met. That's the mirror. It's not about you. We love Tony and you are like the man who brings people together after he's gone. So don't worry, drink it for the Christmas party. And that's what I started, you know, using. It's a dangerous habit. It, it was so smooth and nice that I'm really into it, but I cannot afford it, honestly, unfortunately. So at least with the mere vodka, everyone can afford it. It's not that I'm yes. pushing it to you, Mark, <laughs> but once you try it, you will understand why I'm so happy that people like Chris and many other friends who 
understand my peace message, they understand that this vodka reflects it. It's not just a generic vodka vodka. You need to try it before you make uh, some kind of a conclusion on that, my friend. Yeah. I'm, I'm mm. very excited about that. I, you honestly, you said something earlier that I really got excited about, which is, and, and this is something that's always frustrated me. And I've never even produced my own vodka, but was talking about uh, people drinking it because they think it lacks flavor. I was like, oh, you're not drinking the best stuff then. Come on. <laughs> <man."> <laughs> well, I have it otherwise. But I well, think, oh, no, go, go ahead. ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead, Mark. I was just thinking you've inspired me for a segment on my show where I think I'm going to try doing my own peacemaking with some of your vodka once I've got please, it in store. Please, please, you know, I send you all the positive vibes and I tell you why it's important. Uh, well, how do we put it? I used to teach English under the Soviet Union before the Soviet Union collapsed. There was no mm -hmm. way to be a freelancer, right? They needed to see you. Uh, on the radar screen that you're not doing something they, they didn't approve, right? So teaching sure. English was an established kind of, you know, well-approved sort of way of, how we say, man's profession, right? In the former Soviet Union, right? Yeah. And for me, it's more like enlightening, right? So now with my mission of peacemaking vodka, I'm trying to enlighten people to explain. I'm not an alcoholic. Chris will prove that. I do... <laughs> have certain likings like with Bourdain sometimes we would drink three bottles not of Zamir vodka like a vodka which was available at that time for dinner and after dinner only with the food which is important part of this you know dinner thing right so for me I know that it's not a healthy lifestyle but sometimes when I feel like that it helped me to become more peaceful than I am under certain situations family reasons, political bullshit around, stress, frustrations. So, you know, some people take, uh, get addicted to, to the drugs, meaning that that's how they have the, whatever you call the stress remover, right? For me, right. you know, it's a little bit of, and it could be like 10 drops. Chris knows that when I say I'm pouring you 10 drops, for me, this is enough. This is a psychological minimum for you to get enough substance. And by the way, maybe I'm jumping, but do you remember who was the first Toastmaster in the world history of booze? Mark? No. Okay, Chris would know, but I know he is too shy to say. Jesus Christ, <laughs> do you remember that he was offering <laughs> wine to people, correct? <laughs> so for me, it's more like a communion service. <laughs> you know, don't think that Zabir is losing his mind because he drinks too much. But that's how I, look. I physically look at it. <laughs> I love that though. I'm here for 10 drops. I got a little cup in front of me. You just need a little, little mark cup between and... you and me. I give you the copyright to use the 10 drops of whatever you come up with your own product <laughs> next time on the show. You could say, Zamir, bless me for this. Oh, that's <laughs> wonderful. I will. Thank you so much, Zamir. I appreciate that. And by the way, just to prove it that I'm not losing my mind, my dad, who was a war veteran, he was 15, he had to volunteer meaning I will explain what it means he had to volunteer. His uh, family of seven people of Crimean Jews were executed by Nazis in 1941 when they were, uh, they just occupied Crimea, right? Mm -hmm. So dad, you know, had to take a revenge, so to say. He was 15, but he added like three years in his birth certificate so he could be legally sent to the front. Right. You will see more details. I don't give more details in the book, which I promised to Anthony Bourdain another 10 years ago to finish sooner than later. I, I'm close to that. That's another story, a long story. Saga. Yeah, very uh, uh, an interesting saga of my transformation from commie born communist kind of pioneer into, as Tony put it, the international man of mystery when the world collapsed, like Soviet you know, Union collapsed, the Berlin Wall collapsed, no more walls, right? I was given a chance to travel to meet people like Tony, uh, famous... Uh, uh, newsmakers, I mean, like hosts like uh, Ted Koppel, Diane Sawyer. That's another part of my freelancing after I gave up on teaching five years of school. So uh, what I'm trying to explain to you, why I'm jump jumping a little bit. So that name Yazamir came into my family, not just for the fun of it, right? Because my, mm -hmm. my dad, who basically lost his whole family, only his elder brother Joseph survived the war because he also happened to be at the front at the time when you know, the family was executed in the Crimea. So that's the real hard learned lesson, right? Let's have even a fragile peace than a war.
right? That's why I'm so pissed off around what's going on nowadays when I think some politicians lost their mind and it's about their egos. It's like a pissing match sometimes, right? As you understand sure. what I'm saying. Absolutely. So sadly, you know, we, the human beings, failed to unite our front of peacemakers and stop it. But I'm still hopeful that common sense will win. And that's the toast which we could do. And trust me, it's not that I don't have the mere vodka with me. I do have it. But for me, it doesn't matter when I do chin chin. It could be any liquid. This is tea. I'm not sure you can see it. The real one, right? Not the mere vodka. <laughs> Chris has his booze. You can just, you know, symbolically toast. This is to peace and to peacemakers, to people who understand that we all are different, but we like the similar things. So that's unite about booze, food, sports. I'm sorry. So this is a, a relay back to you, Mark. I might have like forced you out of control, but that's what I want you now to keep more control on me and Chris. I'm sitting, I keep forgetting I'm hosting the show and I'm just like, tell me stories, Amir. I'm fine. I'm like, I'm, <laughs> I have the greatest job in the world right now. So international cuisine, international men of mystery, the, it all worked out great. But I'll, I'll cheers to that too. My cup keeps disappearing, but Thank I, I've got one too. Symbolically. Thank you. That's amazing. Yeah, that's no, that's a beautiful. I, I love it. And I love that you're truly carrying the torch for Dane lit for us you know and i i really appreciate that as i you know as i really dive deep i spent a lot of time watching old clips of you all this week just in prep to uh have this conversation so it's just been really exciting it's really cool that it's just you know there's just a not enough kindness in the world and not enough of that like positivity happening and i think you said it uh -huh. so well where so many things have turned into these like global pissing matches and uh while i laugh at the expression it, it it's it's frustrating so I, I yeah i'm here let's let's lead that charge you know let's make the place of, you know and, 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 and by the way you know just talking to you i just realized something which which is under my book but i have to reinforce it by now so my dad right as a war veteran right mm -hmm. he was wounded um in 1945 there was no place to go back home after the end of the war so he was on transit from a hospital after the, the second wound. And somehow some friends of the family or something introduced him to my mom, who was, you know, in Moscow and then married. And, uh, you know, my brother Michael was born in 1947. Then I was born in 1956. So to cut a long story short, uh, as you probably know, the history of war, uh, the 100 gram shot, you know, the shot, I'm mm -hmm. a gram system. It's 100 grams like this. Right. Could be like three ounces, I would assume was given to the soldiers at the front to upkeep their morale. Because when you have no food, when it's freezing cold, you still need to physically make them feel like warm enough, right? So that's another plus of uh, vodka for me. When it's cold winter season, it's more the time of vodka drinking for my kind of a line of, a, uh, of coming from this part of the world, right? Right. So my dad, as long as I remembered him, he passed away in 2006. It was 83, I believe. Uh, he would drink a shot of vodka every time before dinner when I saw him at home after work, right? Mm -hmm. For the whole of my life, I would remember that. He was never an alcoholic. He was the, the great toastmaster I've ever seen in my life. That's part of his legacy I'm, I'm kind of exploiting during my vodka tastings. So for, for me, a toast, which I learned from my dad, is the way to bring your attention. It's like when I told you enlightening, when you are a teacher of English, as I used to be, you have certain tricks how to bring kids into something they like. I bring the ball out of my pocket and start relaying between them. I tell you a grammar rule, you need to respond. I throw you a ball. Same way when I say, Chris, toasting to peace, he will immediately understand that peace for me, it's about the family, about friends, marriage, people a long away from where I am physically now because that's how we are united. We need a reason to drink, right? So for me right. as a Toastmaster, that's something which I learned from my dad again. And just that's what I saw him doing. Never was drunk in my life. I never seen him drunk, right? No matter how much he could drink. Of course, it's not for everyone to do it. I mean, sure. to compete. There's no way to win. It's not the kind of a game I'm trying to play. Chris knows that I could drink a lot. But normally it's like, three to five toasts, which normally corresponds with the amount of courses you have for your meal. Yeah, right. <laughs> Does it make some sense? Oh, absolutely. 
I, I think what makes the most sense is how badly I'd like to go travel with you now. Oh my gosh, this is amazing. well. Listen, you are reading my mind. I'm, I'm going to travel is something. Which Chris, Chris is helping me. He was recently a little bit of unemployed, and I said, Chris, let's try and think of something which is fun and maybe like hobbies might at some time in the future start paying for 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 your efforts and time. So got right. to travel. That's why I'm keeping this got to t-shirt now, oh, right? Okay. That's another reason one one I'm in Bamberg. This is a beautiful small town in Bavaria. Mm -hmm. Uh uh of mm, uh, Germany. Beautiful. That's another conversation. So I'm trying to bring mm -hmm. that jewels of exploration, destinations which are not normally on the big travel shows, right? Normally capitals or something. And right. another reason for that got to travel was from uh, the fans of Bourdain show, as I told you, that social media mm -hmm. who is more like a good cult when people come together and, you know, discuss the books of Tony, the films, and definitely what destinations you want to travel. Some of them reached out and saying, Zemir, we would love to follow Tony's footprints in the places where you took him to. So primarily, originally, it was Eastern Europe, right? That was his mm -hmm. interest. For me, someone who represented that now Soviet Union mentality. So it was definitely Russia, Ukraine, Georgia, Uzbekistan, right? Now I'm adding Armenia, a very small country, which I loved. I was there on transit in April and mm -hmm. developed network of friends and friends and people who are ready to give access to the homes. That's what I'm saying. Be a traveler, not a tourist. I don't want to be at five-star hotel. It's not that I cannot afford it. It's not of interest to me. I want to maybe stay overnight with the farmer who is producing the best cheese or wine to taste right. it for breakfast and understand better their culture. They adopted Christianity years before the Rome or Greeks and not right. many people know about it, right? Wow. And yeah, I know there is a, a little bit of an open wound for the Armenians, the genocide, when in 1915, sure. several millions were, were, were executed by the Turks. That's another kind of issue a little bit over sensitive but that will be historically explained why they don't have access to the ararat mountains because this the peak of the mountain is now in the ter territory of turkey which used to be part of armenia according to the sources i was reading so got to travel will embrace people who want to learn something like tony said be a traveler to experience new food uh, from the farmers like from the farm to the table street food so it will be affordable, it will be reasonable, and at the same time, I'll be more like as a tour manager. Apart from just vodka, vodka drinking, it's not the pinpoint of the whole travel idea. It's just to drink locally. You remember Tony said, eat locally. I'm bringing the new concept, drink locally. Try to, in Bardstown, why do you need to have, uh, you know, uh, Tito vodka at your, you know, everyday sort of friend's uh, dinner, sure. right? Especially in America, when you have such a variety, diversity of things. So in other words, for me, it will be not only international exploration. I want to bring more people to Cincinnati. I tell you honestly, many friends in Connecticut, New York would say, Zemir, why are you going to Buffalo like every other month? It's like a dump. It's rusty. I said, you know what? That's what some people have their own stereotypes about. And that's what another reason Tony brought me there in the middle of uh, winter in uh, 2009. And I fell in love. It was rusty, it was cold, but for me it was a, a melting pot of Ukrainians, of Polish, Russians, Germans, Italians, Irish, just in one place enjoying it and rooting for, for the Bills and Sabres who were not so <laughs> lucky or successful in their sports career, but people would still go. Overcrowded you know, stadiums like uh, the tailgate party. Amazing experience, right? That's how oh, you meet yeah. new friends and new people. That's what the documentary uh, we're doing tentatively titled Zemir Discovers Bourdain's America, where Chris is now one of the local stars. So wait till we manage to have a little bit of a fundraising soon enough for the post-production completion, hopefully this fall. So I will definitely reach out mm -hmm. to you, should my partner uh, and Sweat Equity and the friend, of course, uh, Stephen Powell, uh, a DOP and a very talented film director, in Buffalo approached me with this idea at one of the first fundraising for Tony's in our suicide prevention local foundation in Erie County, which we did about four years ago. So that's how people start connecting to me. That's, I'm blessed, you know, I'm just like the happiest person. It can, you can tell your, your energy and your excitement's palpable. 
I love it. I'm looking forward to this documentary too. I think it's really cool that you're going out and exploring Bourdain's America and really Thank you. kind of flipping and, what and definitely he's now doing. I'm very motivated to see you at your home place, if you know what I'm saying. Oh my gosh, I would love that. We would more than welcome. I think you'd have a great time here in our store. I mean, we've got food from over 70 different countries. Wow. My yeah, my goal, and it's funny, you kind of said this, and I love it. I had a gentleman in from Italy on a few weeks ago, uh, uh -huh. and he was he was taking our cooking. We have a cooking school in the grocery store, by the way. Mm -hmm. uh, he was taking our cooking school over to Emilia de Romagna in Italy, and he was going over this whole thing. But we came to this point where uh, someone in the conversation, and I forget which one of us said it, but somebody made the comment of uh, travel should be lacking mm -hmm. a little comfort. And that like there, there's like really a big difference between the idea of travel and vacation. It's like, yeah, don't be a tourist. Go out there and find those those hidden gems. Find out what the you know, yes. you really get to learn about a culture that way by going in oh, and yeah. doing it. You know, there's nothing more disappointing to me than, you know, I have like family from Egypt. And it's sort of like, oh, yeah, well, here are the Great Pyramids and the McDonald's right next door. To it. <laughs> you know I mean? like, oh, I can't even imagine, you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm sure you remember Tony would always be critical of the food chains. Yeah, oh, yeah. I want oh, yeah. some names of some yeah, brands yeah. which he hated. But the, that <laughs> Mc, McFoxy chicken, you know, shit episode in Ukraine became like one of the favorites, you know, for the fans because that's how you know satirical this whole thing happened to be, you know, in our oh, lives. Yeah. We definitely want to eat local with the local farmer with the local guy from afghan or from wherever and not many mm -hmm. people will know where, where it's on the map but once they eat his lamb made just in front of them like a shashlik like a kebab place that would oh, be yeah. definitely you know mouth-watering experience that's what the whole life is all about so please help me and chris to do it with you Oh my gosh, I whatever I I'm a hundred percent in in for this. I'm stammering because I'm like, oh, I almost don't know what to say. Besides, <laughs> yes, an emphatic yes. <laughs> <clears throat> and Chris, by the way, I have to thank you so much for getting us connected in the first place. I mean, this is wonderful. Chris, I know thank you. I've already bonded over uh, your cheddar goblin mask in the background, and hopefully, <laughs> by saying that, someone will Google that commercial. But thank you yes. so much for what you're doing. Uh, and actually, maybe this would be a good time to do this. But Chris, I think you had something sort of special planned for this little conversation. Is oh, that correct? What's that? Yes, I do. Oh, well, time to find out, Samir. <laughs> Let me get this together here. Hold on just a second. Chris, you make sure. me nervous. I know you are ex-submarine commander. So what's happening? <laughs> <laughs> well, Samir, as you know, I'm a lord. Yes. And we, uh, I, I got you uh, the same thing here. Uh, I don't know if you can see that, but you are now Lord Yasmir Gata. Are you serious? I, I thought like I was a peasant, you know, born in the Soviet society, which used to be <laughs> classless. So, yeah. <laughs> Mark, Mark, can you see it? Because I'm like 5,000 miles away. Chris, Hold on, you show me, me uh, Mark because I trust Mark more now. Mark, do you see that Lord? We have a protected plastic. Yes. Hold on, just a second. It's protected in plastic. We've got a, a little la layer of protection extra in there. It had your name yeah. and uh, full name too, even better. So yeah. you're now the Lord of keeping the peace. Wait, wait, Chris. Seriously, I, am I in your will now? So what's happening? Tell me. <laughs> oh, you're always in my will. <laughs> So, so what you know. am I entitled to? I don't like to be entitled to anything. You enforce the <laughs> entitlement. What it's all about? <laughs> well, uh, you have a plot of land in the Highland Estate of Glencoe Wood, Scotland, and wow. Kil and uh, Kilnesh. So you have a ten square foot plot <laughs> there in this area of Glencoe, where I am uh, as well. Yes. And uh, it's a nature reserve in Glencoe Wood. And uh, basically, uh, it's helping preserve the lands in Scotland and so forth. But you are owner of that part of land. So, wow. Mark, are you the eyewitness of this? So it's not my dream, right? I'm not, yeah. I'm not dreaming, right? I'm not. No, uh, no. <laughs> Mir, no. we've been and, trying and to wake you up for two hours. <laughs> Chris, Chris, do we have a public notary to notarize it? Like, because I don't want you to tell me tomorrow, the mirror, it was like a joke. No, 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 no. It can be notarized and you can legally go by Lord. Wow. So, and this also 
I have a uh, thing here, so I will read this to you. Okay, please. It says, having by petition unto us of the twenty fourth day of the month of October in the year two thousand twenty one, shown that the said petitioner has purchased lands in Scotland, and the petitioner having prayed that there might be granted unto them to use such ensigns armoral as may be the lawful property of Highland titles and might be uh, suitable and according to the laws of the arms. So, sir, you are a... Wow. Uh, you have the coat of arms. Wow. And again, you are a Lord of Glencoe, Scotland. Oh, my and God. We can get it notarized with your name, and then you can change it to Lord Yasmir Gatha. So, sir, you are wow. now a Lord. Mark, Mark. Congratulations. Chris, it's hard to believe, but I know I trust you, Mark. Believe me or not, the happiest moment for me was in 2001, in early February, when Anthony Bourdain, after the first meeting at the, the airport at the St. Petersburg, where I was, you know, hired to be his fixer. First night, after the first minute, he said, Zamir, I actually need you in the picture. I need you not like behind the camera, because since you are breaking the ice with people you've never met before, I guess you got that message like you did. Why don't you be my co-host? So I said, sure, I would enjoy that. So that's how it started. So now I'm invited to be the Lord in Scotland. Is it correct, Chris? That is correct. And here Mark is the... Oh. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> Mark, could, could you document it for, for, for a podcast that it, it goes like viral so we know that's our next destination for Gotta Travel, Chris? Yes. <laughs> Let's do yes, it. We both need to go visit that land. Wow. And that you know, Mark, so why it's fun. so symbolic? I was born in the country when no one was entitled to anything, right? You know, Soviet Union, Beautiful. communism, the dream, which never was never destined to become the real, okay? But I was born behind the Iron Curtain when I, I had no chance to travel outside of it until 1990, like most people when Soviet Union collapsed, no more walls. Now, with Chris' invitation, I believe I have a reason to be in Scotland, even maybe if I, I don't have the, the right visa, right? I have a property, Chris, correct? <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, you do. Mark, so this is a very symbolic moment. Chris Gentry brought a new understanding that Zamir is definitely a brick in the wall of the whole world, not just of a one-sixth of a territory of the former Soviet Union where I was born, right? It makes my mind like blown. I'm like up now. I'm standing, as you could see. Thank you, Chris. <laughs> You're welcome. You're very welcome. Wow. Mm. I thought it was so beautiful when Chris told me he wanted to do this. I was like, oh my gosh, we have to do oh this. Oh yes. my God. Oh, wonderful. Mark, I, I mean... owe you. Chris, I owe you more, but Mark, since you are the man who could, like my messenger now, basically. You, you are on a <laughs> mission. Please. No, no, Mark, you didn't know what you want, what you get stuck with. You are like stuck with the peacemaker. You <laughs> yeah. need to relay peace, even if you don't like it at some point in the morning. Think Zamir is like maybe like another dreamer, like he was born in the country of dreams, right? So <laughs> let's here. deliver the goods, Mark. Let's have me with Zamir Vodka available in October of this year to have a tasting event. Chris will explain what needs to be done paperwork-wise with your local distributor. The good news I heard from my steel-bound friends, and I really owe these guys. It's a new batch. They produce it in a beautiful new uh, winter crop wheat. It's even more smooth. I'm sure Chris could compare that. So I believe one. now they have Empire distributor for me as well as part of the distribution of their own brands. Mm -hmm. They have their own gin, whiskey, bourbon. So hopefully with Empire help, your local guys, Chris, please make sure that you could reach out to Mark Mark and oh, Steelbound yeah. to understand how to make it a shorter cut of paperwork so that your local distributor can legally order the mere water for this event, not just for me to bring it in my suitcase only. <laughs> yeah, the suitcase vodka, that's our that's you our see, private it sounds collection. more mysterious and I know Chris <laughs> Chris likes it. He was ready to have me driving around you know, uh, Ohio with kind of selling the bottle from the trunk. I'm not sure your state control state is good for that, right? <laughs> well, you know what? I always say, ask for forgiveness, not permission. <laughs> so, I, you true. know, if you need an extra camera crew, uh, that's my background. So let's go. I'm ready. Let's get on the road, boys. <laughs> so, gentlemen, we have we have probably four months left. So let's try and do it, Chris. You, I mean, for me, being Lord is definitely important. But for me to try and have Mark kind of intoxicated with the mere peace message will be more meaningful. 
And that's the episode, everybody. Did you learn a lot from Zamir? Here's what you could do for me. You could get on, drop in the comments. You could say, I want Zamir to come to Jungle Gyms. I think Zamir wants to come too, but I just want to make sure that all of us are together on this one. We're going to try and make a beer with him. Uh, I say we, I mean me, not Jungle Gyms necessarily. On this, well, who knows? Uh, he's making vodkas. He's got his documentary coming out. It's going to be awesome. And to all of you watching the show, as always, I want to thank you so much for your time. Thank you for supporting the show. You know the drill. It's YouTube. Like, share, and subscribe. Leave me a comment about what you liked. Tell me your favorite part of the episode. Follow me on TikTok. There are so many things to try and remember to follow on. Being an entertainer is a nightmare in the modern climate. But I appreciate all of you for supporting the show. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, and on that, I'll see you out there in the aisles. The Jungle Gyms podcast is recorded in the WJJI studio inside Jungle Gyms International Market in Fairfield, Ohio. The Jungle Gyms podcast is produced and hosted by Mark Borison.